welcome to today's Toolbooks tutorial. My name is Samuel Burmeister and I'm the owner here at Toolbooks. It has been a long time, about five and a half years since the last payroll tutorial I recorded for Zero. So I thought I would do an updated refresher in 2022, it's now end of September, to ensure that everyone is getting accurate information in the current year and this will last for another couple of years. So, if you haven't already uh, seen our videos, the way that I structured them is step by step. And so I will be breaking down this payroll series into three core videos. Today's video is a payroll overview, which will take you through the different areas within Xero using this demo file. Video two is going to be setting up new employees. And then the last video will be about processing payroll and paying employees. So. To get started, you're gonna to need to log into your Xero file and I'll just show you around the core areas of payroll. So the first and most obvious is the payroll menu. So starting with the overview, I don't typically use this, but just to show you what it has, gives you a bit of a summary of your payroll information, upcoming payroll dates on a calendar, any leave requests, timesheets, or pay runs currently in process. Employees, this is a core area of the software. This is where you can view all of your employees, current or past. And you can see here in the demo file, we've got a few famous names. Basically, you can click into each employee and view their information. And this is where you would update specific employee information, which I'll go into in great detail in the employee setup video. Pay employees, you'll use this a lot. This is where you raise pay runs to pay your employees. And as you can see here, you can have various payroll calendars. So they've got a fortnightly and a weekly. You might just have one. Zero typically allows for weekly, fortnightly, monthly, or twice monthly. You can also do a quarterly schedule in there as well. Superannuation, uh, whoop, jumping ahead, leave is the section where you can review any leave requests that your employees have submitted. You can also raise leave requests in here to add to the pay run. And if you click into those leave requests, it gives you the breakdown and you can edit the hours, reject, approve, etc. You've got your timesheet section. If your employees are using timesheeting or you have an app connected that pushes timesheets into zero, this is where they'll sit and it'll show you the status. So typically you want to see approved or pending approval if you haven't yet processed them. Once they've been added to a pay run and finalized, they will change to processed. You can also drill into the timesheets by clicking into them and view the detail of the hours by day and by earnings rate. Next up, you have the superannuation tab. If you're in any of the zero payroll plans, so that's normally five plus employees, then you can use automatic super. The demo file doesn't show it, but basically this allows you to pay all of your employees super each quarter to the relevant super funds directly via direct debit from the software, which will link to a specific bank that you've set up. You will get a text message to authorize and you can then pop that into this section and pay the super. Single touch payroll. This is a big one and has changed a lot since the last video. We're now at current date, 29th of September, rolling out single touch payroll two. Basically single touch payroll as a quick overview is a way that the ATO and employees can have all their payroll data digitally. So the idea of single touch is that everything is done from one source and each pay run that you file via single touch payroll to the ATO, sends year to date details of the employees and their payments to the ATO. At the end of the year, you lodge a single touch payroll finalization, which replaces payment summaries, and they'll instead get a digital copy in their MyGov that they can use for their tax return. So each pay, which I'll show in the payment video, you have to file single touch payroll and you also need to advise the ATO of single touch payroll settings, which we'll go through in a separate video. So next one is JobKeeper and JobMaker. We won't go into those in this series, just for a bit of information for those of you unlucky enough to 
have experienced JobKeeper and JobMaker in the last few years. These are um, government incentives in Australia to basically help ease the burden of the coronavirus pandemic and JobKeeper was a regular payment and JobMaker was um, kind of like an incentive payment to help create jobs. And as you can see from the name, JobKeeper was an incentive to keep employees around and make sure that you can cover the costs and help businesses with their cash flow. So you don't have to worry about those two at the moment, most likely. Cool. So that's the payroll menu. There is one other important section for payroll. And for some reason, it's in the settings section. So you need to go up to the business name, click on settings. And this is where you find payroll settings. So if we go into payroll settings, this is one of the core areas you want to set up when you first start. So now we've got a bit of an overview. Let's look at these settings. So the first is the organization settings. So you can select the bank account. Now, this is important if you're raising ABA files, which you'll upload to the bank to pay all your employees in one go. You must specify the bank account that you'll make those payments from. Zero does not pay your employees, but you can create ABA files from zero to load into a bank. Then you've got your liability and expense accounts that relate to payroll. So as you can see here, this is a good example of how they should look. PAYG liability is the PAYG withheld from employees that needs to be paid, typically on a quarterly or monthly basis. That should go to PAYG withholdings payable. Wages expense, that's where each time you run a pay run, it records the expense for your employees, and that should go to wages and salaries. Wages payable, this is where the wages that are yet to be paid are sitting on the balance sheet. So wages payable is the liability account. The super liability, same thing, unpaid super sits in super payable. And the expense for super to the business goes to the profit and loss item superannuation. You've then got payroll tracking. So Zero enables you to track or categorize employees with a few extra filters. Employee groups, you might group your employees by regions as they've got as an example here. So you might have North, South, East, West, A, B, C, D, etc. You can also put categories in the timesheets. So if you wanted some basic job reporting or tracking, you could use this. So for example, if there were two sites that employees worked at, you might have sites as the name of the tracking category. And then in the timesheets, select that as well so that when employees load in their time, they can specify the site they were working at or the job they were working on. Below that, we have payslip options, which is pretty straightforward, showing their annual salary and their employment basis are the two options you have, as well as a logo that you can upload to appear on the payslips. So that's the organization tab. Let's move on to calendars. Calendars are the frequency by which the employees are paid. So if you want to pay employees weekly, you would set up a weekly calendar, fortnightly, monthly, etc. So to add a new calendar, you just simply click add. You select how often you want to pay them. So let's say we're paying them monthly. You can give it a name. So if you've got multiple pay runs across the business, you'd want to name them so it's specific. So this might be monthly salary, for example. The start date, this is when the uh, pay period started. So let's say we're paying September. It would start 1st of September and potentially be paid the following Monday. And so what will happen is anyone that has now got this pay calendar assigned, the first pay period will start from the 1st of September and just click through each time we process a pay run. You click add, and now that's an option when you're setting up the employees. Holidays, this just shows you the predefined holidays from the government. You can also add your own. So if you tick to show holidays, they will automatically load in and help with leave requests. Not much you need to do here. Pay items, this is a really important one. This is basically all the categories that can be used when paying employees. So earnings is the main one. So you'll see here, they've got an example of a few like bonuses and commissions, director's fees, 
ordinary hours. That's just your typical pay for most stuff. You might have things like, uh, what's a good example? I guess most common ones that I see would be things like bonuses, commissions. Uh, you might have payments for separate types of things that are outside their ordinary hours, overtime, all that kind of thing can be set up here. You click add, you choose the type of earning that it is. Let's just say ordinary times. You give it a name, you select the rate. So let's say that I'm setting up um, overtime, right? So I might go add overtime earnings. I'm gonna call this overtime 1.5. I want it to be called overtime on their pay slips. And then I can choose that it's a multiple of their ordinary rate. And I'm going to say it's 1.5 times their normal rate. Then I can select where I want this pay category to go on my profit and loss. And typically, you'd select your wages and salaries account. But if you're not sure, you can check with your bookkeeper or accountant. And then you've got some options here to specify whether this, this type of earnings accrues leave, which in case of overtime is no whether it's reportable as W1. If you're unsure, you can Google the ATO reference or once again, talk with your bookkeeper or accountant, whether it's exempt from super or exempt from PAYG. So in this case, we're just doing an overtime example. It's still, you're gonna pay PAYG. Super is only payable on ordinary times earnings. So we'll exclude that. And it is part of earnings. So it will go on W1 and leave does not accrue on overtime. So we're just gonna add that. Cool. Then you've got deductions on the left. So this can be items like um, your pre-tax deductions, post-tax deductions. You might have an agreement with employees to deduct amounts for union fees. Maybe they're repaying training courses. Maybe it's an FBT related item. There's a number of reasons they might have a deduction and this is where you'd set it up. And you can see here, it has a few different options. Reimbursements. If you want to set up a reimbursement account and run it through the payroll, you can do it here. I personally prefer to do reimbursements via the bills section in Xero. Um, but if you do want to set up a reimbursement, make sure you specify the account so it can be tracked. Then leave. This is where all the leave types that Xero has defaulting appear. So unless you want to add your own like time in lieu or a special type of education leave or something like that, you don't really need to edit this. The last tab, and it's another important one, is the superannuation tab. So this is the one that takes you through adding new super funds. If you are setting up an employee, unfortunately, you can't just add a super fund on the spot if it doesn't exist in the settings. So always ensure that when you're setting up a new employee, if their super fund's not already in here, that you go add superannuation fund. Let's use Oz Super as an example because it's really common. You add the super fund, and then once it's added, you can select it for employees when setting them up. So there you go. There's an overview of payroll and the settings in Zero. In the next video, I'm going to take you through setting up new employees. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up or subscribe.